Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking about bass fishing with spoons. I'm going to be talking to you about deep water fishing, vertical fishing with a jigging spoon. Tim is going to be talking to you about casting, throwing flutter spoons, two very different approaches to spoon fishing for fall bass. It's already working. This works in the summer through the fall transition into fall. You can catch a ton of fish doing this. Fall transition, summer to fall, there's definitely two different styles of spoon fishing. Matt's gonna cover the vertical, I'm gonna cover the flutter because honestly, you can catch them both ways. Your deep water reservoirs or your, you know, out here on Clear Lake fishing humps, rock piles, breaks ledges you can tucky lake guys the big flutter spoons are magical you know a lot of people when you talk about jig or spoon fishing hopping a spoon or, or jigging a spoon they get just kind of glaze over they get overwhelmed today we're going to give you guys some tips and tricks and hopefully enough information to give you guys the confidence to go out and try a flutter spoon or a jigging spoon on your body of water so for me I love throwing a flutter spoon. A flutter spoon is made to mimic a dying bait fish. As it's falling, it's just kind of shaking and, and, and shimmying and just penduling them down through the water column just like a dying bait fish. So you just pop it up and let it fall and they eat it. I have three different size flutter spoons that I'm going to cover. Can I jump in really quick? Okay. The, the reason why we're going to break this up with the two different styles is because they're completely different, right? And I really want you guys to focus on what Tim is about to tell you because flutter spoon fishing, you know, there's a technique to this. Some people have confidence in it, some people don't. I could almost count the number of flutter spoon fish I've caught. We fish together. I could almost count them. I have no clue how many he's caught. There's a method to it. He's good at it. He's going to lay down some details and then I'm going to do the same for jig fishing with that spoon because that is what I love to do. They're different styles, similar fish, different styles and details matter in this video. Sorry. Oh, no, that's great information. Yeah. So flutter spoon for me, it's a, it's a confidence thing, right? We all have our techniques that we like to do that we have confidence mm -hmm. in. And for me, that flutter spoon kind of goes hand in hand with that lipless crank bite. It's just, it just works. And uh, honestly, Matt is really good at the jigging stuff and usually kicks my butt on the offshore stuff. But so not with that. Flutter spoons, again, that fall transition, the fish are schooled up, the bait fish are schooled up. Now we're not talking open water where the bait balls are suspended. Matt's gonna cover that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about when the fish are relating closer to bottom. This is supposed to mimic a dying bait fish. So you fired it out there, you let it fall on semi taut line. You want a little bit of a bow in there and you're watching your line as it falls. You're waiting for that, you know, cause sometimes they'll eat it on that initial fall, but let it fall, walk it down to bottom. And then either it's a, it's like a, a long one stroke up, just a hop and that thing's going to shimmy up and then fall down. Or you can do a hop hop. Now we've done an in-depth flutter spoon video. I, did, I think I did one last fall that I'll link to up, up here and down below in the video description where I actually show you how to cast these and, and all that stuff. But a flutter spoon, you guys really should try it, especially if you're on a body of water that has humps to breaks or ledges because that's where the fish are going to stack up. We've already covered where these fish are going to be. Once you can find them schooled up on that stuff, the flutter spoon is awesome. So real quick, couple tips for you on a flutter spoon. You know, there's, there's a couple of different brands that I use. I use the Lake Fork or the Nichols in like a five or a six inch spoon. You can see this guy right here. It's just made to mimic your, your bigger bait fish, your shad, your, your hair, whatever, your blueback. But first tip, a number four power swivel. You always want to rig a flutter spoon with a swivel in the front because when you're out there fishing for a few hours or a day, however long it may be, you're putting a lot of line twist as that bait is falling. Yeah, you'll sometimes it, it spins. So 100% of my flutter spoons, I add 
a swivel too. Second tip is gonna be how to rig a stinger hook. You know, when this bait is falling, it's dancing through the water column, you have a 50-50 chance of them eating the right side of the bait, the bait with the hook. So the next tip is gonna be adding a stinger hook. So what I do, I take a normal bobber stop, I take that same number four power swivel, and I put a stinger treble right here. I give it about an inch and a half to two inches of play. That way the, the, the hook doesn't slide all the way up your line when that bait is falling down. Keeps it, it in that same area of the head. Is that an SD56? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll link that down below in the I'm videos. telling you he's better at this than I am. I never do it because he catches all those fish when we do this. And, and what I found too, you know, the, the, the stinger hook doesn't really get hung up any more than just a normal bait with a hook. So you are fishing this on bottom, so sometimes you will get hung up. But as that bait's fallen, now you've just increased your hook up ratio because sometimes they do hit that head and uh, now you have a hook in there for you. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as gear, you know, um, you can get away, if this is a technique that you're not too familiar with, you don't have a lot of confidence in, or you don't want to get a specific rod for it, you can get away with your traditional jig rod. 7274 medium medium heavy and just try it out um, but if you want a rod that's designed for it a little softer tip I really like this 904 it's actually a swim bait rod it's a Loomis 904 swim bait rod but it's got kind of a slower tip to it it's almost like a in-between crankbait rod so with these treble hooks you know when you jack that fish you want to keep them pegged you want to keep that rod loaded up this rod is perfect for the five and six inch flutter spoons. Now, if you guys are looking to get into the Magnum spoons, this is a lot of fun. Again, you're trying to catch bigger fish with a giant spoon like that. That's an eight inch spoon. Hopefully you guys can see the teeth marks on that thing. I've caught one pounders, 12 inchers on this spoon. You guys know bass are just crazy, right? They'll, they'll eat things Any. twice their size. But this is the Ben Parker, this is the Magnum spoon. What's cool about this spoon is it comes pre-rigged with trebles. Two single trebles, <laughs> two single stinger hooks that mm. work very well. You know, with a treble hook, each point's fighting against itself. You know, when you're hooking one and hooking the other, they're kind of pulling away from each other. But when you have these large single hooks, they really, they don't, they just work really well. So Magnum spoons, you're gonna need swim bait specific stuff. I really like a seven foot nine or an eight foot rod, kind of a swim bait rod. So you swim bait guys, if you have a swim bait rod, you can throw the big Magnum spoons on that as well. Again, you're just fishing for bigger bites. You will catch little fish, but you're, you can catch giants doing it too. It's a lot of work when you're pumping that big spoon, but uh, chance of getting a big one is a lot better with the Magnum spoons. So it's just some quick tips. Bobber stop, number four, power, uh, power swivel, split ring, and then your stinger hook, and that will maximize your hook to land ratio on the flutter spoon, because they do miss it quite often. I have a question. Yep. You've got a bunch of spoons sitting here. Mm -hmm. A four, I'm assuming I'm looking at a four and a five, and a magnum maybe a six when do you like what are these because they're all different brands but when do you throw each size what's what are, what are your it's it, it all that? depends on the fishery that i'm on the fish i'm targeting but more importantly the fish that i'm trying to mimic okay you know if if we're out here on clear lake and all the bait fish are little silver sides i'm gonna go with maybe a, a four inch flutter spoon something down there on the bottom just hopping around looks like a dying bait fish you remember that time i <laughs> I literally, I think you were with me. I had a five inch flutter spoon on. I had fired it out there. I just had it sitting there and I was talking to Matt and about that had catfish. <laughs> right. Dude. I about had the rod ripped out of my hand. My laying shoulder on bottom. dislocated. It, it was a piece of metal laying on bottom for like 30 seconds. And I'm talking to Matt, just not fishing at all and just got destroyed. It's like a 15 or 17 pound cat. But the benefit of these, what these they really shine is, is mimicking those dying bait fish. We've talked about it in videos in the past, 
A lot of those bigger fish are underneath that school mm -hmm. just getting the leftovers. The lazy big ones are just getting those leftovers and that is what this mimics. So to answer your question, depends on what I am trying to mimic, the bait fish. Okay. Or water clarity, if, it, you know, if it's kind of murky water, I will go with a, a, a gold spoon. Um, is your standard just silver or some? Yeah, some kind of flash. You know, it, it's a big hunk of metal. It looks like a, I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but it just looks like a big metal. I don't even know what you. That looks like a license plate sitting right, in the bottom. Right. Some. Like. Some. Yeah. Something. But there is a, a lot car. of flash. A lot, lot of, of flash. A lot of movement. And, it, and it, especially on the big, the big spoon, you just woo, woo, woo. You you feel it. The rod almost pumps as this thing's falling. Um, but yeah. Mimic and bait fish, water clarity, and uh, like I said before, this is the eight inch Magnum uh, Ben Parker spoon, and you can get it with or without the pre-rigged stinger hooks. I've seen him catch so many fish on those things, and not when you would expect. That's the thing, that's what I want you to take away from what he's telling you is, that flutter spoon, and, and I say that, but I often don't throw it, because I know if we stand side by side, he's gonna catch all of them anyway. So I do other things while he's doing it but it's not just like a giant fish ledge thing. It is, and it works great for that, but I've watched this guy throw it in like three to four feet under docks. There are guys here that are like, well, I fish in a pond or I'm a shallow guy. I, spoons are not my thing. I've watched this guy fish shallow and it's, smash them on a flutter spoon. That's a good point. Yeah, you can fit what, the versatility of a, a small spoon like this, I mean, you could throw this on a spinning rod if you wanted, but you can fire this up at three feet of water under a dock. Again, you're just mimicking a dying bait fish, which is what bass eat. They work all different sizes, all different types of body of water. It just, mm -hmm. you guys should really try it. They're not, they're not that expensive. With those tips, you know, the, the, the swivel and the stinger hook, you guys really should, should go out and get you, get you some, start with the small ones if you want. Get some flutter spoons and try them. Fish them where you would fish a jig or a worm, and I think you guys will enjoy it. Now from there, let's branch over to jigging spoons, to vertical fishing. Uh, this is a little bit deeper water technique, and that's why this is a one-two punch. I typically don't throw these shallower than 15 feet, and I'm most of the time I'm fishing them anywhere from 25 to deep 60 70 yep. 80 feet of water yeah deep water we can cast them out and fish them back mm -hmm. but only to some extent i never make like a full-blown bomber cast typically i'm fishing it straight up and down just hopping if i know that i'm on bait fish where bass are chasing a ball of bait in deep water i may cast out different directions searching because the bait fish don't just sit still mm -hmm. and get eaten right if you have a bait ball if they've corralled them into a cove, they're stuck there and the bass will just ambush and ambush and ambush. But if it's on a flat, if it's in a big expanse, that bait ball will be moving, running away from the bass. So casting ahead and that spoon sinks like a bullet so you can cover a lot of water quickly to try and locate those fish. So sometimes when you see a spoon and you'll see this vertical thing looking at the graph, other times you'll see a random bomber cast go out to the side and somebody will catch one using it as a search bait but the concept is exactly the same as what Tim is telling you these baits flutter to bottom this is a Hopkins that's like the the industry standard spoon is that Hopkins we throw a lot of different baits but day in and day out different parts of the country if if you asked any angler to reach in their box and get a vertical spoon that's what's coming out that is the standard now we have some different things that we like to throw. Our number one is a Blade Runner. It's called the Dust Spoon. This is the one and three quarter ounce. If I could only have one, it's this one. And then I have a couple different sizes and I'm about to show you that. How we fish these is we drop down, preferably around bass that are on bait. You want them actively eating bait fish. Now I can just go down the bank if I see a fish on my electronics, I can drop down and catch it. But if they're around bait fish where there's actual feeding and aggression and there's a school, you can really get them going because a, a spoon is a great technique for getting them triggered, getting reaction bites, really aggressive. And what makes it so powerful in deep water, because you can drop down around a bait fish ball with a drop shot and catch fish. 
but you'll drop down and you'll catch one and then you have to fight him and fight him and fight him you get him unhooked you drop down you're feeding out line and by the time you get back down there the aggression is over the spoon you send that thing down like a bullet you hook them you drag them up you dump them you go back down you get another one it's instant we spend a lot of the day looking for fish when we're spooning and vertical spooning and a short period of the day actually catching so back to the spoon itself real quick what he means by looking he literally means looking on the electronics no fishing idling around that's where you're using your 360 and your side imaging because yep. you're scanning you know 100 feet out to the side you're looking for that ball of bait you're looking for the arches underneath that ball of bait you waypoint it go over then you fish them so that's what he means by looking is using your electronics yep. and idling and finding those fish yeah we have days where we go out and we drive the boat for three or four or five hours and you might stop and make two casts nope start driving again stop drop nope drive another 45 minutes there they are stand up <laughs> stick them stick them stick them stick them stick them and then start driving again those of you guys that don't have side imaging or haven't made that jump yet look for birds look for those types of things that's a where great they're tip. diving on the bait because <laughs> yeah nature will tell you where that bait is it's amazing that birds will sit over a ball of bait that's 60 feet deep Wait, i mean they go. find them it's incredible once they know that they're in an area even if you don't see activity those birds will hang because they saw the bait and they're waiting for them to come back up so that's really good and even just with sonar you have to drive a little more but you will run those fish over you will find them but side imaging really cuts that time down so back to the spoon itself my main spoon that one and three quarter ounce. Three colors, it's that simple. Number one is morning dawn. It's like a pinkish purple color. If I could only have one spoon in the whole world, that's the one I would choose. But to add to that, you know how when we frog, we've got a couple of colors that we really like. So morning dawn's my number one. That bright chartreuse, it's called electric chicken, is my number two. Then my number three, is black shad. Now the important thing, and this is important, all three of these are UV colors. The whole UV thing kind of swept through fishing in the last few years. I didn't really care. I didn't really catch on to that one way or another. The only place that I've actually seen a difference is with a spoon. When we're spooning, it's such an aggressive motion getting those fish to eat I really think it just comes down to visibility. If they can see it, they eat it. Or at least they make a decision to eat it or not eat it. And I think that those UV baits just stand out better. I think they just see them better because I definitely pull more fish. I get more bites using UV over standard. But again, morning dawn, then electric chicken, clearly a visibility thing. And then if those fish are wary, black shad. Really, the only place I go from there is smaller. I don't go to a bigger bait. You know, Tim's talking about throwing a five or an eight inch flutter spoon. The problem with a jigging spoon is I'm already an ounce and three quarter. Where do I go from there, right? If I try to throw a big spoon, you're talking about needing a saltwater rod. Uh, so I really don't go any bigger. I go smaller because they're still heavy. So this is the small version of that exact same spoon. You remember when you smashed them? We went to Sonoma and did a lake breakdown, and you picked up this one and just right. roped on them, just with that smaller size, because the bass were eating a smaller bait fish. And the other one I throw is this one. It's kind of a crappie shape. That's what I think it is in my head, a little pan fish. Uh, for me, this one falls more erratically, little more movement to it, it's just a different profile. But day in and day out, that guy right there is all you need. And again, we're going to link everything down in the video description so you don't have to try and memorize what color of which one will give you all that. Uh, a couple quick tips for you, and then I'll talk specifics of the technique. Uh, two things. Tim already got you on the swivel, and I agree 100%. I'm holding up all these that don't have swivels on them, but if you actually go out and fish this thing for two or three or four hours without a swivel, your line is ruined. It's not coming yeah, back. Just reeling it up, it just it spirals. Yeah. So, same thing. There's a power swivel on there, and that's the way to go. It'll really save your line. The other thing 
is feathered treble hooks. Particularly on that jigging spoon, I spend a lot of my time without them. And I guess the reason why is because we're fishing so aggressively anyway. But if I was actually in a tournament scenario or I wasn't able to run and gun from bait ball to bait ball, a feathered treble will really help convert fish that are a little more wary. I just think it looks right. When that thing's falling down through the water and you've got that feather back there working, it's secondary action. We talk about secondary action all the time. It just adds a little bit something to that spoon. You've already got movement, you've got flash, now you've got that extra motion going on. Now as far as the actual technique, one more thing is line. This is one of the few things I do where I do not fish braid. And I absolutely will not fish braid with a jigging spoon anymore. Uh, my wife, Cece, loves this style of fishing and is really good at it and would school me over and over and over. I mean, she just whoops on us. And all that she was doing differently, well, it's not all, but the main thing was she would fish Actually, she fished copolymer. Yeah, I was yeah. Say different knot. It wasn't even fluoro, and she swears by it. We fish fluoro, and you want to fish a heavy fluoro. If you fish a lighter weight line, it will drive you insane because the line isn't rigid enough. You'll foul all you the get time. All yeah. snagged up. So 20 pound is my standard. You can do it on 15, but you're still gonna foul. Follow. Uh, foul. Excuse me. Foul up. 20 pound, the line is rigid enough that you get a great fall and you still get a ton of bites. Fishing the bait, we snap it up and then you want the bait to fall on a slack line. But it can't be completely slack. That's where the technique comes in. That's why CC would just smash us with this technique. You snap that thing up, if you stay tight, if I rip this up off the bottom and I stay tight to it, it falls back down the same way. It does nothing. If you snap it up and then just lay that slack down, it's gonna get this awesome action. They're gonna eat it. It weighs an ounce and three quarter. It does not feel like a bait fish. They're gonna blow it right back out and you're never even going to know it happened. So the trick to the spoon is to snap it up and then follow, still on slack, but I'm not laying down 10 feet of slack and just letting it fall. I follow it down. So it's still slack, but I'm still there. So if anything happens, if it stops moving, if I feel a bite, if it gets weird, I can hook them right away because they get on and off that spoon. It looks like what they want to eat, but it doesn't feel like what they're trying to eat. So as soon as they get on it, it's right back out. You've got to be quick on that hook set. This technique doesn't require really fancy gear. We throw it on all sorts of different rods, but you can absolutely get away with a low budget combo. You could, you could go out with a $50 rod and catch these fish. An SLX, $100 rod, $100 reel, spooled with 20 pound fluoro, will spoon all day, every day. Uh, you can still throw really nice gear because we all know that fishing with really nice equipment is a lot of fun, but you don't need it for this style. There's enough movement going on you're gonna you're gonna hook those fish. Uh, did I miss anything? You did. Um, getting to the bottom quicker. Thumb and oh spoon. yes. If you just flip a spoon out there, even though it's heavy, and just let it go and just let it pull line off the reel, you know, you just throw it out, leave the bale open, and just kind of thumb it. It'll do this for 45 seconds all the way to the bottom. If you flip it out there and actually put a little bit of pressure on it, just a little bit, then it will stand up and sink like a bullet. <laughs> and it'll get down there 10 times faster. That was great. Because the whole key is getting back down there. Get back on those fish, snap that thing up. Catch one, drop it straight back down. Technique wise, it depends on the species and I've even seen it vary lake to lake. So if you are working off of electronics, and you see a ball of bait, the first thing I want you to do is drop your spoon down, say the bait's at 30 feet, drop your spoon down to 28, and then hop up and come back down. Never go through the bait. If that doesn't work, then drop to bottom, 
and hop up underneath of them. I have had days where all the bass sit on top of a bait ball and hold it, especially out on a flat where they can just run around and they're trying to get away. Sometimes instead of trying to hold an edge, because as soon as the bass get up against them, they move, they'll get right up and just hover over them. And then if you're coming from the top, you're the first bait that they see, right? You're, you're not just one of thousands of shad or minnows, you're right there in front of them. Other days they get down underneath them and they just hold bottom. You wanna get below the school and you'll catch them there. But you can catch them mid column, you can catch them on bottom, everywhere in between. And then as far as landing them, when I stick a fish on these because it is so heavy and because you have a single hook, the key is hit them and burn it. You'll see when those fish come off, they're like flying because we reel them up so fast. Now, if you're pulling fish out of deep water and you're doing it quickly like that, if you try to keep that fish in the boat, you're gonna have a really high mortality rate. You're gonna hurt those fish. So if you are out there fun fishing, stick them, burn them up, unhook them and turn them loose. They'll go straight back down before the gas starts to expand. Pulling them up out of deep water is really hard on a fish. The gases will expand and, and you can kill them. But if you're quick, they're fine. So don't get those fish up, fiddle with them, take 20 photos, live well them. That's really bad for those fish. You want to get them back in the water quickly. Cover why you burn it up, why, you know, you, with all that heavy weight out, outside the mouth. When they eat that thing, you've got a small hook in them and a ton of weight out front. And these fish are thrashing. You know, if you throw a lipless crank or, I mean, anything with a single treble hook, you lose a lot of fish if your gear's not perfect. We'll add an ounce and three quarter out in front and it's just that much worse. Yeah. Literally 100% of vertical spoonfish will come off given enough time, 100%. So it's your job to get them in that boat now. A lot of them will even come off right when they break the surface as we're burning, right as they come up out of the water because we go to flip them, the second they break surface and they can throw that thing just a little harder, it comes out and you've got a torpedo yeah. flying past you. They come off that much. Now changing the hook will help. That same hook he was using for a stinger, that ST56, works really well. That's Once I wear out the stock hook, that's what I put back on, ST56. It's a 3X treble, it's strong. I mean, you're throwing on a seven foot medium heavy or heavy rod but still you're on 20 pound and you're torquing them. So that 3X hook really helps get those fish in the boat. Two different styles of fishing we're talking about here. I'm talking fishing 15 to deep. Tim is talking fishing two feet down to 30 or 40 feet of water. Uh, I typically am right over the top of them or casting, searching for them. That flutter spoon is a cast and retrieve. They're both called a spoon, but the techniques are night and day different. They are both really fun. You can master both of them, unless you've got a partner who's already got it dialed, then you just let them go to town and you do something else. Because I'm telling you, when one guy gets the feel for either one of these techniques, and they are just hammering those fish, it'll drive you crazy to stand next to them like you're not even fishing. It's brutal. But these are really fun ways to catch them. You can catch fish fast, and you can catch giants. Yeah, I think the key to all of this is the time of the year, what the bait are doing, what the fish are doing, and how aggressive they are. You know, the benefit of that jigging spoon, when you stick one, you wanna get back down there as soon as possible, because now you have that school fired up, and you can just one after, I mean, you could it's literally amazing. load the boat on, on the spoon. The flutter spoon's a little bit more of a finesse technique. You're trying to get those fish to eat, um, but the jigging spoon is just, I mean, it's, it's so much fun. It's awesome. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done that already, subscribe to the channel. We do three videos a week for you. You've got to turn on that bell symbol, the notification symbol, so that YouTube will tell you when these new videos come out. But we appreciate you. If you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.